Good afternoon. I hope that everyone is enjoying this last day of 2021 alongside family and friends. And if you're one of the folks that can't take the day off work, perhaps members of our law enforcement community, our healthcare workers, our EMS, I want to thank you for your service to our community. Now, normally this time of year, I like to pause and reflect upon all the good things that have happened over the course of the past year. And we should pause and reflect, and we should be grateful for the many blessings that God has given to our commonwealth and our nation, but I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge some of the challenges that we still face. And for example, Kentucky is still under a state of emergency and, and has been ever since uh, Governor Andy Bashir declared it back on March 6th of 2020. That's right, folks. We are now in day 600 and 65 of 15 days to flatten the curve. Although we may not still be experiencing some of the hardships and challenges that we did before in terms of the mandates that shut down Kentucky's businesses and banned in-person worship and the interstate travel ban and our Kentucky students being out of the classroom for over a year, but as I'm traveling across the Commonwealth, one of the top concerns that I hear involves vaccine mandates. We have folks that are having to make the impossible decision of choosing whether or not to receive a vaccine against their will or lose their ability to put food on the table for their families. That is why I have pre-filed BR-106, which is a bill that would ban vaccine passports and vaccine mandates, and Kentucky should provide statutory protections against mandatory vaccination. Uh, Florida's done it, Tennessee's done it, Montana's done it, and I firmly believe that Kentuckians have the ability to make good decisions for themselves and their families, and no one should be able to force a person to receive a vaccine, whether it's the government or their employer. You know, beyond that, it is clear to me that our constitutional rights are not safe in the hands of Joe Biden. I mean, he, he's made it abundantly clear in the context of these unconstitutional vaccine mandates that he will stop at nothing in his agenda to limit our freedom. So for that reason, I've also filed four Second Amendment bills in order to be able to expand uh, the ability of law-abiding Kentuckians to exercise their Second Amendment rights. The first bill, and I've filed this uh, in previous years, but it is a bill to abolish so-called gun-free zones. I also have legislation that would create a Second Amendment sanctuary of sorts. It, it essentially creates additional protections from any type of federal overreach that might come down from the, the Biden administration or any other future administrations. I also have legislation that would disallow discrimination against the firearm industry, as well as a bill to expand constitutional carry um, from folks who are age 21 to folks who are age 18. So I'm really excited about the legislative session that is going to begin in just four days. Uh, I firmly believe that with a 105 out of 138 seats in the General Assembly being held by Republicans, that we are well positioned to lead from the front. Uh, Kentucky can be a beacon of conservative values for the entire nation if we stand firm on principle, stick to our guns, and don't compromise. And that's what I've been fighting to do. And I need your help in accomplishing that. Today, being the last day of the year, is also the deadline for me to be able to fundraise for my house race for 2022. I ask for you to stand with me as I stand firm for our conservative values. Please consider donating at the link below or visit my website, maddoxforky.com. It is truly a privilege and an honor to serve you and I hope that you have a wonderful and safe, happy new year.